you know, we came off this, uh, this uh, Kent State game on the road. Really proud of the uh, conviction and the uh, toughness that our team showed going into halftime. Uh, really down 21 points. Very easy for a team in that situation to say hostile environment on the road. Um, down a lot of points. Um, let's just get ourselves ready for the next game. This, this team made an intentional choice to um, show the maturity and the conviction and belief that they had in one another and um, fought back very hard and really proud of the way uh, uh, our players demonstrated um, their ability. You know, defensively, we probably played a bad half of football in the first half, and we had to dig ourselves out of a hole. And then offensively, uh, really came alive in the second half. And, and uh, you go on the road, anytime you have a conference game and you rush for over 300 yards, there's a lot of uh, positive points to take off of that. And then, you know, we really had the one big, big uh, kick that was missed uh, that would have tied the ball game up. That kind of uh, changed the course a little bit of uh, what happened in the fourth quarter. Um, so, you know, we recognize all the, all the uh, information that we collected off the film, good and bad. And... Um, we're really putting ourselves in a really great position to attack the rest of this conference schedule uh, through the rest of this month of October and November. Um, you know, there's, there's a healthy amount of communication and conviction in that locker room. Really believe we had our best Tuesday practice today. Our offense moved around very, very well, and our defense was in and out and um, had a lot of great communication and a lot of great plays that were made. And uh, now it's about just putting it on tape and, and putting ourselves in a position to go beat Ohio at 12 o'clock. Yeah, um, I think we've had our ups and downs. I think, you know, the ability to finish in the fourth quarter is probably the, the, the main thing that would probably stick out. Um, you know, we're up 10-7 Western Michigan um, uh, right out here uh, at home. And uh, we didn't find in the fourth quarter and didn't find a way to finish that game off with a win and to battle back down 21 on, uh, on the road against Kent State and then put ourselves up 38-34 and not come away with a W. I think the word is just finishing right now. And I think our players uh, really see that and know that. Um, we've played very well at times on both sides of the ball. And uh, outside of the few mishaps we had against ODU in the kicking game, we've been pretty solid all year. I think the word right now is finish. Uh, we have a lot of confidence in the guys in the locker room. The players have a lot of confidence. And uh, we know, uh, we know what's, uh, what the task at hand is uh, ahead of us. Um, uh, Ohio, 12 o'clock at home is re really where all of our focus is, correcting some of the mistakes. Um, but but there's maturity and there's conviction and there's there's a there's a lot of uh, uh, of confidence in, in in one another, player to player, coach to coach, and uh, we got to go put it on tape and get it done right now. Has there been a discussion with the team about finishing games? You know, just like sure. Oh yeah, well, not an issue, but just hey, what do we need to do? You know, uh, Western Michigan had a, a really explosive offense. Uh, that's been scoring a ton of points all season. And uh, uh, we held them to seven points going into that fourth quarter, and then we didn't finish the game. You know, and offense was kind of uh, not, not their best uh, on that day. And, you know, sometimes you're, one side of the ball maybe has to carry the other side at times. And uh, defense was doing that for the most of the game, and then we didn't finish that game. And then a little bit, uh, a little bit of a reverse uh, at, uh, at Kent State where our offense really – uh, got it connected and got it going. Uh, the running game came alive, you know, with, with Kevin and Ron and and, uh, and McDuffie and even and even uh, Kyle on some quarterback reads and Matt Myers on some on some uh, quarterback keeps. And uh, and then we didn't uh, we missed one big kick in, in the kicking game and then really f didn't finish a couple drives on defense where we had an opportunity to win that game. I think the word right now is finish. Uh, we're playing extremely hard. Um, uh, there's a there's a ton of conviction because you don't come down, you don't get come back from 21 points and take a lead in the second half. Without there being some grit and toughness to you and a lot of resolve, um, and I think right now we just got to finish. We got to learn how to finish and close things out, and that's really the next step for us. And uh, we believe we have the ability to do it. The good teams, you, you see that the good teams that, like you said, the offense comes back and, and takes the lead. You know, they have that defensive team or vice versa that says, "Look, we got to take it on a notch and on a level to 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 you know help out the other side of the ball." Right. This team have that. Yeah. I believe we do. You know, when you look at when you look at the totality of our defense throughout the season, uh, you go back to Coastal Carolina, right? Coastal Carolina, one of the most explosive offenses in the nation. Uh, well, 
Fourth quarter, we have an opportunity. We're down three points to win that game. You don't do that without playing well on defense. You look at Nebraska, what the numbers that they've put up since that we've played them. You know, they played a Big Ten opponent, um, and they scored in the 50s. Well, Nebraska in the fourth quarter is 14 to 3. Uh, you look at uh, Western Michigan, fourth quarter, they're seven points into the fourth quarter. They put up 44 points against a Power 5 school. We've shown the ability to play well on both sides of the ball. We have to bring it all to life and bring it all together in one game. Um, uh, the energy and the attitude and effort in our locker room uh, knows that we have the ability to do that. We have to go put it on tape and do it, and I believe we will. You've reiterated that you believe this team has what it takes to make the postseason, to make the bowl game. Besides you know, getting, making that biological threshold, what, what is it going to take for this team to get into the postseason? Yeah, a lot of what we just talked about. We need our best players to continue to play very, very well for us, number one. I think when you get into the later months of the season, um, uh, your, your best players – uh, got to continue to grow and uh, play up and beyond to the capabilities that they, that they have. You look at a guy like Keon Williams that we got throughout the summer uh, that really hasn't been long, here long with us. He's one of the best receivers uh, in the MAC, uh, maybe in the country, and he's playing at a very high level for us. Uh, Kyle Van Treese continues to play well for us. Our implementation of Matt Myers gives us another element on offense to continue to add explosive plays. Uh, we have a three-headed monster. We feel like with Kevin Marks and Ron Cook and Dylan McDuffie that are all running the ball very hard and playing well for us. Um, and and then our offensive line, which probably had the biggest question mark going into the season, well, we just rushed for 300 yards in a conference game. And uh, we've done a lot of great things protecting the quarterback throughout the season very consistently. I think we have to bring things together and collectively uh, on all three phases of the game, offense, defense, and special teams, play up to our ability and put it in 160 minutes together. And we know we have the ability to do that. Defensively, Taylor Riggins playing at an extremely high level for us. Josh Rogers, Damon Williams, George Wallow. You know, our front with Max Michelle, they've done a really good job of really um, uh, uh, th in the totality of the season outside of maybe a few quarters uh, here and there. Really, the first half against, against Kent State wasn't our best football, but we responded the right way and got things back on track. And they've done a good job all season of playing well for us. James Patterson has been extremely consistent. Uh, Gaddafi Wright, when he's playing at his best, can be very good for us. And then, you know, we've had a mix of guys in the se secondary. Pre Washington probably been one of our most most consistent guys, Corey, uh, Corey Gross has got it really going. You know, Logic Hudgens going down uh, took, took, took a little bit uh, out of us in the secondary, but we have guys that are stepping up like Isaiah King um, that we need to continue to grow and play up to his ability. So in pockets, and really, if you look at the totality, we have a healthy locker room and a good football team. We have to bring it all to life in 160 minute and put it all together, and that's what we're looking to do 12 o'clock against Ohio. Similar hole with yep. that play. Have you kind of tapped into the guys <laughs> and that sure. positive experience that then won five? I think that's where a lot of the conviction and confidence comes from when you have guys like Jake Fusak that has been in that situation. You know, Kyle and I, uh, were, Kyle Van Treese and I were talking about that same situation this morning before a team meeting. Um, you know, we believe in one another. Uh, there's no uh, there's no doubt in one another. And uh, I think the confidence and the conviction, if you come out and see us practice, the tempo and the energy, if anything, it's grown. It's grown. Uh, the, the, the meter's going in the right direction. You're always looking at, really, the big picture statistic uh, stats of where things are, and then you're kind of looking closer of where the trends are. We're trending in the right direction, really coming off of a hard-fought game on the road, um, and there's a lot of conviction and confidence. We have to go put it on film. we got to go do it. You know, we need our best players to play our best, and that's what we're looking to do. 12 o'clock against Ohio. He's day to day. We'll keep examining him. Uh, last week he was out. It was a game time decision. We're going to continue to examine him this week and see how he does. Uh, Coach, you mentioned the missed field goal. Alex has struggled a little bit. You know, that can kind of be a mental balance. So, what have you guys been telling him? Make the kick. Have you guys discussed the change at all? We're going to continue to uh, evaluate up, up until up until game time and make a decision on what we feel is best. Um, we got confidence in Alex. He's made kicks before. You watch him practice, he can consistently do it. The ability is there. Bring the ability with the confidence. Go out there and do it. You can make the kicks. Go make the kick. Kick it straight. Uh, don't try to aim it. Don't overthink it. Go through your, your, your motions. Go through your approach. And uh, we have a confidence that he can get it done. Right. Um, you know, what can you tell us about Rodgers and what can you tell us about what we see from Ohio's offense? 
you know, really the two-headed monster that they have at quarterback, Curtis and Rodgers. They've been rotating quarterbacks a little bit. Some, um, you know, you go all the way back to uh, to Rodgers. You know, the, the, the funny thing, uh, you know, I was talking to uh, Coach Cawthon. You know, they defended him. Uh, when, all the way back when Coach Cawthon was at Arkansas State. And uh, so there's some familiarity with him all the way back um, that goes back years. He's a lethal threat at the quarterback position, very dangerous on the ground. Um, they're using him the right way. Uh, he's made plays with his legs. He can make guys miss. You know, you kind of see the repeat of kind of Adrian Martinez, McCall, um, you know, um, Crum that we just played this past week, uh, 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 Western Michigan, Ellaby. You know, the, there's, just, there's this element of just lethal quarterbacks that can run in, throw, that just present uh, a lot of problems to, de to defenses, and we just got to put a plan in place to defend them. Uh, they, they rally around him, and uh, Ohio plays very, very hard. They do a very good job of using him the right way, and we know we got a big task at hand, and we got to be our best and, be our, and get ourselves ready to go. Yeah, just um, I think you you know perspective is is a is a is a great tool to have in your life. You know that word of perspective. You know what is perspective? It's the way you see things based off of your past experiences. You know I think when you go through certain experiences and, um, and you can grow through them, you can uh, gain confidence for things in the future because of what you've been through and um, I think that the connection and the experiences that our players have had in the locker room and um, the success that they've individually had and, and and the feeling that we know we have something special here together just creates something really good the communication is very healthy from coach to coach and, and player to player and then on down from coach to player and player to coach and we have open discussions about where we are how do you see things and um, I just think it, it's it's it, it, it builds on the connection that we have. It creates trust, and that trust is a great word that carries you throughout the season that you really fall back on. I think ultimately every relationship you have in your life, that foundation of trust kind of just gives you confidence. You believe in one another, and it carries you through a season, and that's what we have right now. Yeah, I think we have an identity of individual players that can make plays that we collectively have to bring to life in, in, in one setting. There's been a ton of players play very, very well for us all out throughout the season. Um, we've had 21 points decided our last four games. We're very aware of that. You know, we've played in a ton of close games. You know, three points to Coastal Carolina, one point ODU, seven points Western Michigan, a very good Western Michigan team. And then really, it was really a one possession game going into Kent State. Uh, we got to take that next step to finish. We have a belief and trust and confidence in one another that we'll get that done. And um, we, we're looking forward to our opportunity to go put that on film and play our best when our best is needed against Ohio at 12 o'clock. 18 of your 22 touchdowns have been, uh, offensive touchdowns have been running back scores. I think last week, three guys at 75 yards, they're not stopping you, you know, in the running game. So is the identity running? I mean, 18 and 22. And do you like that, or would you rather have maybe more of a mix? Well, we, we love the fact that we have those 18 touchdowns on the ground, but we also have a guy like Keon Williams that's nearing 600 yards receiving and in, in, in one of the top receivers in this conference in the MAC. Um, that we feel like we can go through the air with to the air with him. You know, you can look at a guy like Jake Mullenich just caught a touchdown pass in the game. Um, Tyler Stevens is coming to life. Dom Dom Johnson, I think, has uh, tripled his production from last year up until this point right now. So we have a lot of guys we feel like are ascending at the right time. Um, we feel like uh, right now we have to just block out the clutter, block out the noise, get focused on what's in front of us, and let's put a stretch together of really playing quality football and playing our best football when our best is needed right now, starting at 12 o'clock against Ohio. Yeah, number one, the first thing that sticks out is that uh, we have all the respect in the world for Coach Solich and the program that he's built and put in place. And you see a disciplined, well-coached, 
um, although he'll Coach Solis is not the head coach, very aware that we see the, uh, the effects of his culture still there in that locker room. They play extremely hard. Ohio does. Um, uh, we know we have to play, we have to match that and exceed that for us to have a chance to play our best. Their discipline, great fundamentals. Um, there's a, a few elements that are, that are presented uh, right now that maybe weren't alive the last couple years offensively, maybe opened it up a little bit more with a couple things uh, um, uh, with uh, Coach Tim taking over as head coach and now ultimately calling the plays but also having a head coach responsibility. Um, but we just have tons of respect for him. This is a program that consistently goes to bowl games. They have a tradition of winning football. They have a tradition of playing well on the road. And uh, we just have respect, and we know we have to be our best to go out there and play well and ultimately get the job done. How much do you focus on and talk about bowl eligibility as a goal for the season? Uh, you know, what we talk about in a in – a, you look at – you know, leadership to me is you, you lay out a big picture vision. Um, you talk about – uh, where you see things and how you see, see things and ultimately where you want to go. And then you take um, a, a microscope and you kind of zoom in a big picture vision with maybe a short-term focus and what's in front of us right now. Uh, well, we knew that, um, you know, we had a very challenging schedule ahead of us when we began the season. Uh, we've played a ton of quality, really good football teams. We're very aware of that. I would include ourselves in that category of being a really good football team, despite what a uh, initial uh, a glimpse of a record may look like right now. And what we have to do right now is continue to improve. And I feel like we're doing that. Um, you, you go down 21 points on the road, and if you end up losing a game by 28 or 35 points, we probably have a different discussion. Uh, but when you look guys in the eye in the, in the locker room and we lay out what we need to do, what we know we're capable of doing to not only dig ourselves out of that hole, but to ultimately take the lead, um, it shows you the grit, the resolve, the determination and toughness of that locker room. You know, I told the team after the game, tough teams last. You know, they call it a season for a reason. You know, it's a it's a it's a week by week psychological physical, mental battle that you have to have some conviction and vision in what you ultimately want to do to continue to grow and take the necessary steps. Um, so we feel like we're doing that right now. And uh, my job as a leader of this organization and program is to make sure that we block out all distractions. We look at exactly what's in front of us and we talk about how we have to do things and that we understand why we're doing them. You know, everything that we do has to be tied to ultimately a purpose. And uh, we feel like that we're living out our purpose. We're walking with conviction in that locker room and on the practice field. And then we're looking forward to the opportunity to show uh, and grow into the team that we feel like we're capable of becoming over the next six to seven weeks of this season and on to postseason play.